Recent developments in AI have been interesting. I am sure I will do many more podcasts on this topic, but um, for the moment, some people have asked whether GPT-4 and its rapid adoption have changed my views at all about AI and AI risk. As some of you know, I did a TED Talk on the topic of artificial general intelligence in 2016, and that's available on YouTube and elsewhere, presumably. And nothing has really changed about my concern for AGI and alignment, artificial general intelligence, and the problem of creating it such that it is aligned with our interests. It's probably a worse problem now than I thought it was, because the main change here is that the suddenness with which AI has improved and the way in which we have blown past all of the landmarks that AI safety people have carefully erected, that has alarmed me and many other people. Because in all my conversations with people like Nick Bostrom and Max Tegmark and Eliezer Yudkowsky and Stuart Russell, it was more or less an explicit expectation that as we cross the final yards into the end zone of human-level intelligence, even under conditions of an arms race, which are not at all ideal for solving the alignment problem. But even in that case, there would be a degree of caution that would sober everyone up. And so, for instance, the most powerful AI models wouldn't be connected to the internet, or so it was thought. And they obviously wouldn't have APIs. They wouldn't be put into the hands of millions of people at the outset. But with GPT-4, we've blown past all of that. And so now it's pretty clear that we're developing our most powerful AI more or less in the wild without fully understanding the implications. So in my view, this does nothing to suggest that we're better placed to solve the alignment problem. And that problem seems to me to be as big as ever. And it has also magnified the near-term risk of things going haywire due to unintended consequences and potential malicious uses of narrow AI. And with GTP-4, it's almost like we've done our first above-ground nuclear test, and we've seen the flash of very impressive AI. And now many of us are just waiting for the blast wave of hoaxes and lies to knock everything over. Now, I hope I'm wrong about this, but I'm half expecting the internet to be eventually inundated by fake information by lies and half-truths, to a degree that could render it totally unusable. I mean, just imagine not being able to trust the authenticity of most photos and videos and audio and text. I mean, imagine what the internet becomes when AI-generated fan fiction crowds out everything else. Then imagine the cultic entanglement with all this misinformation on the part of billions of people, globally. It seems like it could be ivermectin and adrenochrome and dogecoin and catfishing scams and ransomware and who knows what else for as far as the eye can see. And even the best case scenario could still look totally uncanny. I mean, let's say we solve the misinformation problem, though how we're gonna do that is anybody's guess. But even if we did, What will people want when all valid information can be produced by machine? All art and science and philosophy, when even the smartest and most creative people can be taken out of the loop, what will we want then? And for some things, I think we just want results. I don't care where the cure for cancer comes from. I just want it, right? So there's no future in artisanal oncology. Just give us the winning algorithm. But what about nonfiction writing? If you just want the answer to a specific question, I think AI will be fine. If you ask ChatGPT to tell you the causes of World War II, it does a pretty good job. But this will never substitute for reading Churchill, provided you care to know how the world looked to Churchill himself, and not to some credible simulacrum of Churchill. So I don't think anyone knows how all of this is going to transform our relationship to information. But what I'm experiencing personally 
now is a greater desire to make contact with the real world. I mean, to see my friends in person, to travel, to be out in nature, to just take a walk. And it may sound self serving to say this, but podcasts and audiobooks are becoming more and more important for this. I still spend a tremendous amount of time in front of a screen and reading physical books, but I now spend almost as much time listening to audio because it's the difference between being stuck at my desk and taking a three hour walk or a hike. And being able to do that and still call it work is just such an amazing have your cake and eat it too experience. And while all of this is still being enabled by a smartphone, the effect on my life is quite different from being married to one's phone for other reasons. Listening to audio really is different than endlessly checking email or Slack or Twitter or something else that is fragmenting your attention. Anyway, it's pretty clear we're witnessing an AI arms race and gold rush and that things are about to get very interesting. And it seems quite reasonable to worry that the landscape of incentives is such that we might wind up someplace truly undesirable. In fact, someplace that actually no one wants to be. And we might arrive there despite everyone wanting to avoid such an outcome. So there's a lot to figure out, and uh, I am sure I will do a few more podcasts on this topic before I'm replaced by a bot that does a far better job of it.